Hey there and welcome to my new video. Today I wanted to talk about Mr. Key and his new role in the 1.5 update. He is located at the farm behind the golden walnut door that you get access to after completing the quest and that is getting 100 walnuts. In this video I'm gonna talk about the quest that he gives you after unlocking that room and some tips on how to properly complete them. After we collect 100 walnuts for the first time, we get access to the golden walnut door. There we meet Mr. Key. He congratulates us and explains his role in all of this. You can also see that he's monitoring the area because on the screen you see two little islands, Ginger Island and the Stardew Docks. He explains his own currency, the Key Gems, that you can get from completing his challenges. The challenge board is on the left and you have two choices daily. If you pick one, you can choose the other one. And on the right side, you can exchange those gems for rewards. Also, there is a cat statue which monitors all your progress on the character. The challenge board is really special as it gives you pretty unique challenges. The cavern and mine invasions are really special as when you complete the mine invasion, the mines unlock and you get access to the new kind of mines with harder enemies. A skeletal shrine will appear at level 120 in the mines, which you can turn on and off whenever you like, if you want to make the mines with harder enemies or weaker ones. The shrine will only have an effect overnight. For the skull cavern invasion, you just need to make it to level 100 to complete it. I also have to mention the quest Key Scrop, which is pretty special and hard to complete. Mr. Key hid around the world his key beans that you need to plant in order to complete the quest. You need to ship 500 key fruit, but in order to ship it you first need to find the beans. The easiest and most efficient way to find them is going to Skull Caverns and blowing everything up. You need this as fast as you can from the first day, in order to complete it. One advice from me is, go to the skull caverns, get all the beans, then go to your farm. Use the deluxe speed grower as it will boost the speed growth of the plants. The key fruit needs 4 days to mature, but with the speed grower you achieve that in less than 4 days. This quest is a tricky one, so I wish you all good luck. As for the shop, he offers so many new things to buy that will help you in your playthroughs. For example, the Junimo chest, which allows you to get access to your items from two different locations. One can be on your farm, while the other on Ginger Isle. But the only limiting factor is that it has only 9 slots. The next one we have is the horse loot which you can use to summon your horse on Ginger Isle or back in Stardew. You can summon it inside though, and I think this will be a nice addition, since sometimes we forget our horse somewhere and we need to go get it, but having the flute means that we can summon it everywhere. We can also buy Pierre's missing stock list, which when turned into Pierre, he will expand his inventory, selling seeds from all seasons. This will allow us to always have a source of seeds for every season, that we can plant on Ginger Isle. This is a pretty neat addition to Pierre, since it will help a lot of players. We can also buy the Hopper. This machine automatically adds his content to the machine in front of it. This is pretty neat as it will allow us a level of autonomy on our farm, as we can set up a lot of these hoppers to help us in our crafting process. We'll need only to pick them up, but the hoppers will do the rest. We also have the Enricher, which, when used on a sprinkler, it automatically fertilizes the land when seeds are planted nearby. This is pretty handy for those players with big farms out there, because now they won't have to fertilize everything by hand. You can also buy the Pressure Nozzle, which will allow your sprinklers to have an increased range of watering. This is a pretty nice addition to the sprinklers, as now people will have bigger surfaces to water, as the old sprinklers had 24 tiles of range, now these ones have 48 tiles of range. This will allow the players to have bigger farms, 
and also the chances of growing huge crops is increased because you'll have more surface area to plant on. When used in combination with the enricher, this will allow you to have bigger and better crops. The next machine is the deconstructor. We all saw it on the teaser pictures that Concern Day posted on Twitter, but we never guessed what it did. It seems that this machine destroys a crafted item, but salvages the most expensive material that was used in crafting that same item. This can be quite handy for some items that you crafted by mistake, or recycling old items for their upgrade, like the tappers. Either way, this machine is a nice addition to the game. Now for the next item, which is a lifesaver, the key to the town. This item allows you access to every building in town, no matter the time. I can't remember how many times I completed the request, but I couldn't turn it in because the time was already night and the NPC has went home. But now we get access to all of the NPCs, no matter the time. You can use this to your advantage. For example, give them gifts early in the morning and spend the rest of the day doing whatever you want to do, or for requests and things like that, you no longer have to worry about losing them, since you can enter the houses even after they close. But be careful, they still may go to sleep. The next item is the Galaxy Soul. This item is special because you need 3 of these to forge a galaxy weapon, which is probably one of the best weapons in the game. This item can also drop from the upgraded skull caverns and mines from the mobs. Also, now you can buy a mushroom tree seed. You no longer have to wait for a random spawn on your farm, you can just buy it from here and plant it there. For the fishermen out there, you can get a new kind of bait which is magic bait. This bait allows you to catch fish from any season, no matter the time, weather and in any water you cast your bait. And for all of those cooks out there, you can get the key seasoning which will elevate the dish quality to extraordinary heights. You can also purchase a replica of Mr. Key's iconic hat. Another decent item that I like is the Aquatic Sanctuary, which is a big aquarium that you can buy for your house. The reward also includes a heavy tapper recipe, which is a better tapper than the one we have which works twice as fast. You can also buy the Hyper Speed Grow recipe, which allows you to grow crops faster for 35%, and the Deluxe Fertilizer recipe, which greatly improves the quality of items grown. You can also buy the recipe for the Hopper Machine, so you can craft it yourself without needing to buy it, and the Magic Bait recipe, which will help those fishermen out there catch more fish. At the end, you can get an exotic double bed that looks awesome. If you by any chance have some extra golden walnuts left, you can exchange them for key gems at the reward shop. The 1.5 update brought a lot of new things to the table in Stardew Valley. The replayability of some of the older content in the game is now more fun, and you can get some rewards that are pretty unique, and so far I have explored a lot of it step by step. There are so many hidden events and puzzles around the game that I have found enjoyable at most. Well, except the Simon Says puzzle, because that can really get on your nerves. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more videos like this, feel free to press the subscribe button as I will be making more of this in the future. But let me know in the comment section what item from Mr. Key's shop interests you the most. In any case, I hope you all stay safe and I will see you in the next one.